You know, Vishy, you do a lot of praying and listening to God and um, learning about yourself and really, really learning how to live in community. Everybody is different, and so uh, you have to learn that there's different personalities, there's different history, there's different customs. Sometimes there's different um, nationalities, and so you learn to um, appreciate those differences. Um, well, first you start um, discerning uh, whether or not you're called to be a Franciscan. And then you contact the vocation office, and then you talk with the vocation office, do a come and see weekend, um, determine that you're ready, go before the admissions board, be approved, wait a couple months, then start postulancy and you do a year of postulancy and um, if that goes well and you determine that you want to continue and they determine that they want you to continue then you move on to novitiate which is um, your first year in the order as a brother. I was never really sure that I should become a Franciscan. Um, most of the time I was pretty unsure, a majority of the time, but I needed to trust God and um, go with what I felt like he wanted me to do. And so I went forward not knowing 100% if I should do this. I think that if I'm ever 100% sure that someone should uh, take me away because um, I don't think I'd be fully human if I didn't have some doubts. As you go along, there's, you learn more. So when you're in discernment, there's only so much you know. When, and so you make a decision based on that. And then you do a come and see weekend. So you know a little bit more and you can make more of a decision there. And postulancy, you get to live with friars and so I think when you go to postulancy, you make a decision more based on reality than based on idealism. And then in novitiate, you're making a decision based on, uh, on really what God wants because they've taken away all your distractions, the good distractions and the bad distractions, and uh, it makes it very easy to hear what God is saying. Postulancy was a, a bridge between one world and another world. Um, you're used to living your life the way you want to live it, the way you've learned to live it. And in postulancy, there's a certain amount of give and take that occurs. And so you have to get used to living in community and, and get used to um, assuming different values and um, and, you, and then there's all the practical stuff that you have to get used to uh, like you get used to eating dinner together you get used to praying together you get used to um, hanging out together and you're learning about the order and you're learning about the history of the order um, and initially you don't have any, like you don't know any of these stories and you hear all these stories and you start to learn, okay, this is what happened. Commitment for the novitiate is um, taking the time to pray and think and talk about whether or not you're ready to take the vows. You haven't taken vows yet, but you're spending this year trying to decide if this is the life that you really want. Obviously pray and think and talk, but a lot of it is experience. Um, you experience what it's like to be poor, 
you experience what it's like to um, be obedient. Um, you experience what it's like to live chastely. Um, you really experience that. And those sound wonderful and kind of pie in the sky, and but... There's a reality to that, and it becomes a real thing. It's not some kind of spiritual question. It's more of a real question. I thought that I was, I thought I was an obedient. I thought that living poor wouldn't be that big of a deal, but the rubber meets the road in Novitiate. One of the things that I found in talking with people that have gone before me is that it all seems wonderful. And it is wonderful, but it's not easy. It's easy to make a decision based on ideals. It's really easy to make that decision. Maybe not for someone in discernment, but You're dealing with fantasy before. <laughs> You're dealing with what you think it's going to be. And what it is is normally different. It's very balanced. We have class time. We have uh, formal prayer. We have um, personal time for prayer. We have time to work. Um, we cook for each other, we clean the house for each other, um, and we have time to recreate. Sometimes we watch TV or read or um, uh, play games, talk, talk to our families and friends from back home. Um, uh, one thing that we don't get to do very much is go out or, are going out on the town is limited. So you're not leaving the world, you're not leaving your family and your friends behind. But that does change quite a bit. The relationships have to change. So um, you can't go visit mom anytime you want. You can't, you can't even call people anytime you would like. But you do get to you do get to keep in contact with them and stay in touch. Um, you can do that by the phone or by writing letters. My hopes and dreams are to be able to work with the poor. Um, what that looks like, I'm not sure. Um, there's ample opportunity to work with the poor, especially in our province. I would say um, talk to um, people that you know, people whose opinion you respect, and ask them hard questions. Um, ask them significant questions. And um, ask them to ask you significant questions. Uh, talk, to, talk to priests, talk to friars. Um, talk to as many people as you can talk to and ask, ask real deep and honest questions of them and yourself. If you feel like you're called to this life, then um, don't be afraid to say yes to it and don't be afraid to say no to all the things that you will probably have to say no to.